everyone how's everyone doing today
And I was just, just double checking my sound, make sure that was working. I'm working with one camera today. We're adding to our uh, quilt in the day resource book, rulers. Um, I put a link to my, it's called pay hip, my pay hip account, <clears throat> excuse me, for today's page to go in your resource book. And while you're out there, if you haven't got the outside uh, cover page, you can get that. And then the page for the flying geese rulers is also out there and they're free. So I just wanted to remind you about that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I swear I <clears throat> cleared my throat before I started. So this is the ruler for today. Comes with two rulers. So we'll just give it a couple minutes. So if you want to go ahead and uh, go and click on that link and download your um, instructions, they're just basic instructions in case you're like me and don't always have your instructions with your rulers. Uh, you have time to do that. We're not going to stop for a minute or so. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got my tools ready. Uh, 7010 Microtex needle, regular sewing thread. I got my quarter inch foot with the guide on my machine. Got the big machine out today. Only because I have an embroidery class to do, so it does hog up the whole table. <laughs> I'm not complaining, mind you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's our little block. Triangle in a square. So we'll just give it another minute or two if anyone wants to say hi in the chat. Anybody sewing along? We're going to make this uh, two sizes that can be made. We're going to make a four inch and then a three inch. So the four inch triangle will have a five inch strip and that will be the actual triangle and a six inch strip, which will be the two sides. It's a fairly easy uh, block or unit to do. And I'll give it just one more minute. So if you didn't watch uh, last Thursday night, <clears throat> excuse me, it's when we when I did the uh, two sizes of the flying geese rule of the um, large and small, I think it was, or large and regular. Large and small, I believe. So you can always go back and look at that. Hey, Rhonda, how's it going? I was going to ask you if so and Nancy was there, but that's on Saturdays. Oops. So I think we can uh, I think we can go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to set these tools out of the way for the minute, and let me get um, let's see if I can hold this up. So I, and I I know it's pretty clear. But here's the ruler, and this ruler, let me do it so the light, there we go. This ruler is for cutting. The four inch unit will use the whole ruler, and the three inch unit will use the red line, and I'll show you how that works. The top does not come to a point, it's flat, so that uh, helps line things up better. And then the other ruler that comes with it, 
These are the squaring up rulers. The green lines and the whole ruler is for the four inch unit and the red lines and then the red line going like this is for the three inch unit. So we're going to set this one aside for the moment. Got the iron heating up. And then in case you didn't see, this is the actual um, cover to the bag that it was in. Oh, here we go. Okay, so we're going to do the four inch unit first. So as I said, let me just put this right like that. So the triangle part is the five inch strip and the, I'm going to call them the diagonal rectangle and you'll see why in a minute because I know that's no such thing, but um, our six inch strips. So we'll go ahead and cut our Triangle first. Let me just set that out of the way. And open this up. And these rulers are pretty slippery. And I don't, I didn't, um, you can buy either little clear gripper dots that you can put on, or there's, um, Another product, I can't remember the name of it, but it's like a sheet of gripper, clear gripper goes across the whole thing. So either one of those would work. So I might be a little erratic. So you can see that this flat end, remember how I told you it was flat here, right here? Doesn't come to a point. There we go. Boop. So that is going to line up with the top of your. Um, of the strip. So the bottom lines up with the bottom, the top lines up with the top. And in this case, don't cut toward you. So when you go to do your next one, so here's one done. When I go to do the next one, and you have to be careful if you have directional fabric, but you can turn the ruler around So you don't have any waste. And there's another one. So let me just set that out of the way. So that was pretty simple. So there's two triangles. I'm just going to set them right uh, out of the way for a minute. And this is just a scrap. I'm going to put this in my little house scrap bag. And now we need... Um, two three inch by six inch um, rectangles. Just couldn't think there for a minute. But we need to have them um, right sides together. So I'm just going to um, fold the fabric over so it's right sides together. And I'm going to give that a little trim only because it's not even. You just use a regular ruler for this part. So I just wanted to make sure before I cut the two rectangles that that edge was even. So I need a three inch. And I'll set that aside. So it's, let me see if I can move that. Which light is it? That one. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so six inches, three inches. There's two under here. Remember, I put the right sides together. Okay. Then I'm going to take my ruler, and I better use a little bit longer one. Hold on. Set that out of the way. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from this corner, the top left corner, to the bottom right corner. So this is what I'm calling my diagonal rectangles. I know they're really a triangle of some sort, but because we're working with the rectangle, it just made more sense to call it a diagonal rectangle. So you can see, so each side has the same amount. So I'm in the top left corner to the bottom right corner. And when I do that, I have uh, pairs. Let me stick some of this out of the way. And what I mean by that is, is if I bring my triangle out and I take one of these pairs because they're facing each other, they're going in the right direction. Does that make sense? So if I just went down and did rectangles with everything either right side up or right side down, I'd have all lefts or I'd have all rights. So that gives me two sets. So I'm just going to set these set those aside for now. I can face towards you. Okay, so now we need to sew these together. And you'll notice this one, the, the diagonal rectangle is longer than the triangle, and that's okay. I'm going to flip the triangle onto the rectangle. And when I do, I want it so, see that little extra there? So my triangle, this straight line across, should be down far enough so both edges, both corners, are on that rectangle fabric. You see what I mean? Okay, and then I want to make sure it's lined up along this edge. Okay, and I'm just going to sew a quarter inch seam. So I'm using my quarter inch seam with a guide today. Trying to keep my hands out of your way so you can see a little bit of it. And you see, I did have this big tail hanging off, but that's okay. And I want to press, let's see, I want to press uh, towards the small rectangle. I mean, towards the rectangle, not the small rectangle. So I'm just going to give it a little press. You can use your... Um, your wooden iron roller. And I'm lifting and pressing. So see, we look, we look fine at the top, and this will get trimmed off, but we're nice and even with that edge. So now we're going to do the other side exactly the same, except this time, instead of flipping the triangle onto the rectangle, remember how when we've sewn before, it's like turning the pages of the book. So this was column one or page one. We flip page two. We're going to flip the next page. And we're going to do the same thing again. So let me just get it lined up. And I want you to be able to see the back. So that's where we sewed the first time. 
and there's our new one. So see how those two little baby triangles line up together. So we just set our seam and then So whenever, and then flip it over, whenever, whenever I'm going to square up a unit, I always, even if I did my, um, my roller, just before I square up, I just, put a, I just put a crinkle in there. Before I square up, I am going to press with my iron. And I'm just pressing the seams. I don't need to press the whole unit. So now we're going to use, a, I need to keep that thing right here. Now we're going to use our square up ruler and we're going to use the green lines. So at the top, this is to show you have your quarter inch seam above your point. The green left and right triangle will be on the seams and the block should come to the bottom. Or we'll trim it so it's at the bottom. I have my head in the way. Looks like I could have taken a little bit more seam allowance than I did. So let me see if I can come in a little closer so that you can see better. Oh, let me do it this way. So can you see? Here's my dash line going across, and it's right at the point, or right above the point. And, oh, sorry. The green lines of the triangle are going down the seam allowance between the triangle and the rectangles. And this ruler is this ruler is slippery. So I'm gonna trim the top and one side. And if you had your um, rotating mat, you could twirl it around. And because I moved my ruler in fabric, I'm going to just make sure it's lined up again. And I'm going to trim across the bottom and up the other side. And there's our block. And we have that quarter inch seam allowance. So when we stitch across, When we stitch across, we're going to go right with, right above where the two seams cross each other. You see, right across, so we'd go right across there. Just like a thread above where the X is. I got extra thread here. See if I can cut that thread off so it's not in your way to see. Oh. So, oh, Glory, if you're watching, I forgot to put red thread on. I'll do that right now. So can you see where the two lines cross? So let me put some red thread on. It'll only take a second. Does anybody have any questions? Well, you got to have some kind of question while I put the thread on.
So I'll go ahead and sew another one so you can see it with the red thread. Okay, so here's one done. So I'll go ahead and do the other one with the red thread. Oh, thanks, Rhonda. Rhonda said it looks good. Well, we'll make it look better with some red thread. So always, what is that? Oh, there. See, if I took care of my rulers, it wouldn't be so much shining on you. So always line them up or put the, the what I call the diagonal rectangles where they belong. We're going to flip. The triangle over. So we're lining it up along this edge. And at the top, we have that little tip. So this little squared off section of the triangle is on all fabric. It's generally about a quarter of an inch. Red thread this time. Red thread. I was just looking the other side as white thread, it's the bobbin thread, but we don't we don't need to see that. And watch. Oh I thought it was gonna be the bobbin thread that's showing. So there's our red thread. Okay? Gonna put it back down again. And this time, remember how we turn the page? So we're flipping the other um, diagonal rectangle. I couldn't remember what the name of it. I couldn't remember what I called it. And again, that fabric's above that, and it should be matching up with the guy on the back. I don't know why I talked about the fabric like it's people. The guy. As long as I don't start naming my fabric, that'd be a awful, horrible thing if I had to start naming my fabric. Oh, so, <laughs> so one, so one is bobbin thread and one is a red thread. That'll make you laugh. So, the, so, but you can see now where the X is. Trying to do it so you still see the light. So we'd be like one thread or your needle would be just above where they uh, cross. X marks the spot. So right there. So now I'm going to have to start putting red bobbin thread in. Okay, and let's go ahead and square this one up again like the other one. So I'll do it facing you. We're using the whole ruler, and there's the line that's going to give us our quarter inch at the top. Now I stitched this one a little better. So I was a little thin on my seam allowance, so my seam was in a little bit. Now it's right on, it's right on the spot. And you notice I always pull away what's supposed to be cut before I take my hand off the ruler. And even, oh, let me see if I can get up here higher. Here we go. 
So the first thing I do is make sure I've got that top of the ruler now is with the edge of my fabric. I want to make sure my green lines that come down for the triangle are lined up with the triangle seams that I just stitched. So now we have two. Okay? So that's the four inch one. So let me just set those aside. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, on the three inch one, we don't need quite as much fabric. Let me flip my little instruction thing over. So this time, I think I can use from a charm pack. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, it will be a little wasteful because I don't have the ability on a charm pack to, because it's not good when the roll is totally clear. So on the, on the charm pack, because it's only one five inch square, you don't have the ability to turn this and keep going back and forth. So if you wanted to make a lot of them and you were concerned about your um, what's left over, then you would want to do a strip of fabric and then you'll get the most out of it like we did on the first one. But I'm just doing a sample, let's see. Who will we put in the middle? I guess we'll put this one in the middle. So this time, I'm using the red line to go by. So this strip, if I cut a strip for, for this piece, um, let me cut a strip because I, then I can show you what I mean about. So I've got this strip left, but I only need, now this was, um, was this, what was it? Was this four inches or five inches? Um, so this is going to be four inches. So let me just cut that because I think we were five inches last time. So one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I said four inches. I almost cut it the same again. Now I can actually pick up. So here's where I had cut the bigger one when it was five inches. But look, when I put my ruler there, oh, there's that glare again. There. When I put my ruler down and I'm using that red line, it lines up perfectly. Now I can't cut from I can't cut from that angle. So let me go this way. So what I'm gonna do just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna oh no, it's right. So when I cut one, and again, if this has to be non-directional fabric. Then I can just turn my ruler around to the other direction. So now my red line is at the top. And my top little, I call it the flat little flat top, is at the top of the strip. So then you would just keep going, and you wouldn't have any waste at all. Okay, so let's see if I can get it. Uh, I don't think I'll have enough out of this one. I can get, I can get one out of that. So now for our rectangle, for the rectangle, we need a uh, five inch by two and a half inch, pardon me, I'm gonna sneeze. So if I had a, 
Um, <clears throat> if I was using a, well, I'll use one. If I was using a charm pack, uh, which is five by five, it's just a matter of cutting the charm pack, the charm square in half. And I'm just going to, because it's five and I need two and a half and two and a half, I'm putting right sides together. Because remember, we have to have a left and a right. And I'm just, I folded it over. So now I have a fold here. And I'm just going to like barely sliver cut it off. Because I don't want to lose, I don't want to lose much. Let's see if I can get away with that. So I just cut a little sliver off. All right, so now I have my two and a half by five, two pieces right sides together. I'm at the top left going to top left, bottom right. So when I have I have a pair. I'll open it up. Oh, I'll face towards you. I got a mask going here again. Oh, which way am I? I'm this way. Wrong way too. So remember when I have a rectangle when you have a rectangle and you cut two rectangles on the diagonal, you're gonna get two pairs, two sets. Okay? So now we're going to stitch it together the exact same way. Let me get that out of the way. So just like the book, we're reading the book. I'm going to flip the page. So I'm going to flip the triangle on top of my diagonal rectangle. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm lining up the edge. And I want to just scoot this down. So see how the orange fabric is uh, totally on the blue fabric, but I just had to scoot it down a little bit to get there. And I have a real big tail at the bottom. And that's okay. Okay, so now I've got a red bobbin. So now you'll have you'll have all red. Okay. So remember, we want the fabric on top where we want the seam allowance to be. So I'm just going to flip it up. Oh, where well that steam came out. And I'm just going to push that fabric just at the seam. Oh, that was hot. And again, you probably don't see, but I, I I lift the tad as I move on. But this one's small enough, I just need to stay in one place. Oop. Put my other side on. And you'll know if you have the right side, because here's, here, here's the wrong side. So you'll know right off if it's going, if you got the right one or not. See how it's going up? So you'll know if you've got the wrong side. I borrowed that from the other guy. Because it's going to make a square. Okay? So again, turning the page. And 
and you can see so there's the little guy underneath and this top one's going to line right up with him so if you flip it over you can see that the orange fabric is all on blue fabric well, it was until I just moved it. Notice we always hang on till we're done sewing. Oh. I didn't push that end over. So I got, I, I creased myself. So we got lots of stuff hanging off. Looks like little ears. Now this time, we're using the red line so we can only do two sides at a time because here's one edge, here's the bottom to our triangle, but we still have the same quarter inch at the top. Steamed up my, uh, oh, I'm going to press that one more time. Boy, when you uh, iron a crease in, you sure iron a crease in, don't you? So I'm going to use the red lines this time. So you can see the green lines over there. So the red line on the right, see if I can come in a little bit. Hold on. I'll make a camera adjustment here. There, how's that? Better? Okay, so this red line right now means nothing. We want to make sure that we have our quarter inch at the top. That's the same dash line. Here's the red triangle. That's where it's going to end. But we're not going to use these two lines until the second half of the trim. So I've got to turn this. So I can trim both two sides at once. Okay, so you can see my red triangle is coming down each side. There's my quarter inch. And you automatically get it when you put the red triangle in the right, right place. Okay. Then we're going to turn this upside down to us. So it would be this way if I wasn't on the camera. So we want to turn it upside down so the point is facing towards us. And we're going to turn the... No, did I do that backwards? Isn't that terrible? <laughs> I'm having a moment. No, I was right. No, I was wrong. All right, now now I'm having a moment. Let me look at my little picture. Okay, because I got my ruler upside down. So the point is facing us, but we're turning the ruler and the point is facing up. Because I knew something wasn't right. And we're going to line up. So you see how we have... This line coming down and the line coming across. That's what we're using now. So we used the triangle when we did it with the point facing up. We used the triangle. When we turn it around, the ruler stays the same. We're just going to now use the red line on the left and the bottom and pray that I'm doing this right. Sure, there we go. Scared myself there for a minute. Okay, and now you can, oops, sorry. The camera's in a different place now. 
I got a little knot there, but now you can see where the two threads cross, except you shouldn't have that little bump of fab, uh, thread there, but right where those two threads cross. So let me, let me stitch another one so I don't leave you confused about the trimming because I confused myself there for a minute. So see, again, we know, we know, we know that's not right because it's not straight across the top. And see, there's plenty down here left over. That's okay. Oh. At least not have that glaring on you. Okay? So now you can't see my sewing, but you've seen me sew before. I think this is easier for you to see this way. Oh, hi, Persis. How are you today? I got to take a little drink here. Okay, so we're going to do a turn in the page of the book. Okay, so let's see if you can see. You see how my, um, what is it, orange fabric is hanging over the edges? So I just need to, thought I, could, I thought I could do it in the air. I want to make sure that the orange fabric has blue under it the whole way across there. And it, and it is a quarter, usually it's a quarter of an inch. <laughs> because when you start sewing a quarter of an inch, the two fabrics, you're coming down a ways anyways. You wouldn't start way up the top. Okay, so we're pressing to the smaller or to the diagonal rectangle, so we want that on top. Set our seam, push that over. Okay, get our other piece, lay it down so we know that it's right. Remember, I've, I've taught you before when we're sewing units or blocks together, lay them down how they're supposed to look before you start turning fabric over and and guessing where it might go. See how it looks. And we're turning the page. And this one lines up there. Now you can see the, see the two. They're lined up together. Oh, well, how's that seam look? And there isn't, there isn't one. I had no, there was no thread in my needle, apparently. Okay, we're flipping out to the 
diagonal rectangle. You'll be saying that tomorrow, diagonal rectangle. That'll, if anyone's a teacher, it'll make them cringe probably. Oh, here we go. Now we can see the nice X marks the spot. So let me get something I can point with here. So when you stitch across, you're stitching just above where the two actually meet. You'll be like just your needle above right there. So my if my needle came down, see how I can still see the point? That's where you'd want to be. Okay, so let's... Uh, I had to turn my iron off. It was getting so hot. So let's go ahead and square this up, and hopefully I can do it without confusing you this time, or confusing myself, even more important. Okay, so we're doing the smaller one, so we're using the red lines. The point's facing away from me, so I'm working with the red um, di uh, triangle diamond. So I'm setting the triangle so it's right in the seams where the blue and the orange meet well I'll tell you there wasn't there wasn't much on top then I'm going to leave my ruler the same way and I'm going to turn this block so now the point is facing towards me, but this time I'm going to use this red line, the red straight line, and the red straight line. So I'm going to line the, this, this, is, this is the side we trimmed, and this is the side we trimmed. So I'm lining those red lines up with the sides we already trimmed. Oh, and I moved my ruler. Oh, let me get that out of your way again so it's not glaring on you. So there we are. Isn't that pretty? All right, what did I do with the first ones? Here's one. Oh, here we go. Oh. So from the one ruler, you get the two sizes, okay? So remember, the first ruler, which just has that one, hold on, which just has that one red line, when you're making the bigger size, you're using the whole ruler. When you're using the smaller size, you're using the red line for the bottom of your fabric. The top is still the same. The difference is here, okay? If you're doing it on a strip, you'll cut your first one on this side, turn this around, it will line up with where you just cut, then you'd cut this side, turn it around, line up the next one, and so on. You just got to be a little careful. If it, You can do directional fabric, it just depends on the direction. Like if it was words, well, then you, 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 you have to do it this way across. So that probably wouldn't be the best one to use. But if it was, um, well, no, I was thinking if you had um, little ducks or something, but no, then because one, no, no, it'd be upside down. So yeah, let's skip the old, let's skip the old directional fabric. Make it easy on yourself. And I'll show you if you were using the the charm pack, you would just, um, you'd have to use it for the smaller one because it isn't quite wide enough. Can you see how the edges are over? So the smaller one, when you cut it, you're going to have these two pieces left over. I'm not sure if these two pieces wouldn't be the same as these pieces. Oh, let me cut it and see. Shall I? 
Oh, no, I can't because it'll, so it'll cross over each other. So if I cut this, I know I was going to cut upside down, but. So see, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get, you wouldn't get two pieces the same because this guy kind of ran out a lot when that one went over. I was thinking that'd be nice if you had your little, these little pieces already. But I don't think that will work. You hold on one second. My head's in your way, I know. Hold on. I'm going to experiment for you. Oh, good, Persis. You were just wondering. Well, uh, let's, one, let's wonder no more. Because I'm thinking that maybe this goes over too far, and this one might be okay. So let me... Do right, you think I got enough rulers out here now? Hold on. I know these rulers glare, so let me get them out of the way. So if I fold that in half, and I just barely take a sliver, okay, let's see, and then I cut these on the diagonal. You know what I say, it's always one way to find out is you just give it a whirl. Okay, so this one I know will be fine because it's bigger. So that could be trimmed down. So you'd have to make yourself a, a little set like this and then you can just come along and place your ruler on where the good fabric is. Okay, that works so far. So these would be the same. That's good. Now this one. By golly, Persis, I think we might, we might, uh, ah. Uh, All right, hold on a second. Let's see. Because that's the part that hangs over. So see how we got that little piece there? All right, let's see. I don't have a I don't have a triangle. <laughs> All right, so if I fold this over this way, oh, uh, now now it doesn't it doesn't uh, it doesn't angle right. It's kind of bizarre. So no, that won't work. Wait a minute. Oh, wrong one. Oh, for crying out loud. That's this one. Flips over this way. Okay, wait a minute. I got to get to the other side. Had it angled wrong. Flips over this way. Uh, no, it just misses it just by that little bit right there. All right, now back to square one. We tried, Princess, we tried. See, it was worth trying. So close, so close, so far away. Okay. Well, we tried it, Paresis. Um, oh, she say, oh, for the small block, she said. Wow. 
Well, yes, you can because this one. No, this is the this is the tool. Oh, hold on, hold on. Um, no, because you have to lay this down the same way again because this flips out and gets trimmed. So no, that it won't work either way. It won't work. So there we have it. And again, um, if you didn't hear at the beginning. In the description below is the link for the pay hip. So for the page for your resource book, I just, I didn't do any pictures or anything. I just typed out what you have to cut for the two sizes and how to sew it um, um, so that you'll have that for your resource book. And if you didn't get the last Thursday's uh, resource book pages for the flying geese, uh, those are out on my pay hip account as, as well. You can get those and they're all free. And then there's a front page for your resource book. So there we go. There's our little, our little guys. And that was pretty simple. Um, and like I say, probably easiest to just have strips of fabric. Just like one strip salvage to salvage would make quite a few if you have one strip for each color. Um, that would make quite a few of these blocks. And these are nice for um, if you want to do all borders with one on top of the other, going around, you know, going around the top, however you want to do it. So these are cute. These are cute little blocks that think about borders as well. Blocks for your borders. So thanks everyone for joining. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, hit the um, bell for the reminders. And a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you like my little experiment, thumbs up for that, even though that today's experiment failed. <laughs> but thanks again, everyone, for joining in. And I will see you next Thursday at 7. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great night. Bye-bye.